Cancer treatments are often effective, especially if we're dealing with an in situ cancer, and that means it hasn't moved, it's in its place of origin. In that case, surgery is really effective. Radiation therapy, which is what's going on in the video down below, often uses x rays or gamma rays, and they're in a focus beam. In the, the machinery, the modern machinery enables uh, multi uh, directional targeting. And then there's often masks and shields. So in the old days, cancer victims often had burns and damage of healthy tissue. But now that's been mostly done away with. Chemotherapy often used for metastatic, uh, and that's spreading cancers. Because in this case, the, the cancer's on the move. And we can use chemicals through an infusion process to treat the, the entire body. The, the PICC line is, is often used if the patient's going to go through uh, a long-term uh, chemotherapy because this long plastic catheter, it just stays in the arm, uh, often for months. And then each time the, the patient comes in for an infusion, um, it's an easy hookup. The drugs used tend to kill by damaging the DNA or just interfering with its ability to divide. Bone marrow, sometimes harvested before the treatment and injected because the, the patients are um, the vulnerable. The chemotherapy is often uh, traumatic on their body. So stem cells, cells help with uh, regeneration of blood cells. Uh, we look at leukemia. Uh, that's often treated with bone marrow transplants because leukemia is a cancer of the bone marrow. Immunotherapy, we, uh, in this case, we use DNA vaccines. Now, take a look at this. We, we take the genes from a cancer cell, and these are only the genes that um, code for the production of um, the cancer marker. So if you look at the example of that orange, that is a signal on the surface that says, hey, you know, this cell is not normal. It needs to be destroyed. So now we're going to take these genes, insert them into uh, something harmless like a yeast and then re-inject this yeast and then what's going to happen is the uh, the macrophages in our body, okay, white blood cells, they're going to attack this thing and we can kind of teach our macrophages to destroy anything that has that surface marker. It's really slick. Um, some of it's still experimental. Let's take a look at this. I'm going to move it forward to right about, yeah, right about here. There's a retrovirus here. Take a look at this little example here. Here we have, let me see if I can help you out here. There is the um, part of the DNA that marks uh, codes for the surface marker. See that little strip there? And we're going to insert that into the chromosome. I know this looks kind of uh, strange. Oh, there's the yeast cell. I, I talked about the yeast cell. So we're going to put that DNA into the yeast and trick the, the yeast to produce these, in this case, a hepatitis surface marker. And then we can train our bodies to... Uh, fight it. All right. It's coming. It's It works uh, for some patients, not for others. Tumor starvation. I like this because we can use chemicals that um, cause vasoconstriction, and that means they're going to inhibit the formation of, of blood vessels, and that, that term is called angiogenesis. Think of uh, uh, genesis as the beginnings, like in the Bible, and then angio, think of uh, blood vessel so if we can reduce, we can basically starve those tumors because in the core of a tumor, those cells are, um, you know, they're, they have very little oxygen and very little bit, little glucose. And so they're, they're going to send out signals, hey, let's get some blood vessels. And if our medicines can stop that, then we can starve these guys. Ethnobotany, you know, there's, there's a long history of primitive cultures that have used uh, plant medicines for treating diseases. And uh, there are like vincristine, there's various cancer uh, treatment medicines that originated from these ancient cultures. A uh, good example, Keshwa Indians in the Amazon basin. I, I worked with these guys. And they have found, uh, you know, a few, I have to be honest, um, drugs for human disorders. But, um, it's hard work. It's hard working in there. Uh, okay, I'll stop. Uh, specific cancers: cervical, 
certainly is one, and we worry about hepatitis, uh, the virus contributing to this. And this is why annual pap smear is important. We're going to scrape those epithelial cells from the opening of the uterus. The, the cervix has uh, rapid cell divisions every year. Smear it on a slide, we stain it, and we look for those uh, abnormal large nuclei. Uh, and also these cells appear immature, because if you remember, cancer never matures to become anything. It's, it's unspecialized. Um, breast cancer, it's a major uh, killer even today of women. Um, the mammography is low intensity, okay, so it's, it's relatively safe. There's a lot of debate about this process. Some breast tissue is too dense or there's multiple fibroids which are um, benign. <clears throat> They're harmless, but um, the examination process is still um, uh, being perfected. You can see down here in the lower right what those uh, breast cancer uh, cells are going to look like. And this is just uh, palpitation. It, it helps it, if you uh, regularly palpate those breasts and feel for uh, these lumps, these fibroids. Lung, uh, lung cancer is very uh, typically dangerous because it's an exchange site with the circulatory and lymph system. So it metastasizes rapidly, especially the small cell, and uh, tends to be more common in people who smoke, but there are many people who have never smoked who suffer from lung cancer. So it's one of those things that um, the etiology is often unknown. Prostate cancer, uh, that's why men get their PSA tested, uh, prostate specific antigens, uh, uh, which are indicators, but they're not always um, uh, positive. I mean, they're not always uh, trustworthy. We can follow up a positive PSA reading with a transrectal biopsy to confirm the blood test before we go in there and start uh, removing the prostate tissue. Uh, it's so close to testicles that we worry about it migrating over in metastasis to the, become testicular cancer. Skin cancer, uh, rapid cell division on the skin surfaces. So we have basal cell carcinoma, which begins in the lowest layer uh, look at the word stratum basal. You think of the lowest layer, and it's going to erupt as a scaly patch. Squamous cell is also near the stratum, but uh, it, it produces keratin. And here you get these um, uh, kind of dry, scaly tags. Um, thankfully, we have the stratum cordium. It's the surface layer, and for the most part, it's a barrier that protects the living layer, the dermis underneath. Malignant melanoma. This is one. It kills about, oh, I don't know. I forget how many a year. The symmetry is irregular. Borders, irregular. Color varies, okay? So it's sometimes different shades of brown. Diameter, if it's greater than 6 millimeters, which is a, then we have a problem. Elevated and evolving, okay? So um, it will change over time. Death is common. Uh, many people die of this. And even people with dark skin. Here we have Peter Muga in, in Africa. Very smart, covering up his body. And look at very stupid Dr. Madden. Uh, okay. <laughs> okay. So that was a short one. Hope you enjoyed it. Thank you.